every couple I've ever seen have trouble starts right here. They can no longer talk. Hey, Travis, look at your beautiful bride. Remember the day she gave you her phone number? <laughs> Dude, can you remember talking until your battery died? Here, it got hot and started sweating. Hey, Travis, if it takes that to get her to an altar like this one, it takes that and much more to keep her alive. You have to talk. In every marital union, there is a talker and a non-talker. There's one of you who says, let's talk about it. The other one says, for what? But listen, no matter what, you must talk. If you fail to communicate, all of this was beautiful for Facebook and Instagram, but your marriage will fail. But if you talk, you will talk your way through it all. Learn to listen. Learn to share. You don't always have to agree, but you always have to communicate. Yeah. Number two, budget your plan and plan your budget. Love is one thing, but it never pays bills. Right. Yeah. I want to let you know in every marriage, there is a spender and a saver. I don't want to know which one is which. Just hear these words of wisdom. Let the cheap one keep the money. You always going to have resources when you need them. If you can share beds, you can share banks. So understand that the resources you gain as a family are your resources as a family. We are unapologetically Christians. So we believe in tithing. 10% of what we get goes to God. The second 10% we learn to live on. The second 10% we learn to save. 80% is what we learn to live on. And I believe if you practice this long enough, you will eventually live on 10% and have a 90 just to go ahead and say, God, what do you want me to do? Mm. It is because he favors us for doing it. Number three, avoid third-party intrusions. Yeah. And I'm so glad all of these seats are packed to capacity because I can say things to them y'all can't say. So, on behalf of Travis and Secret, if you love them, hear these words. Stay out of their business. <laughs> Please hear this. If you tell your family the things that go on under your roof, they'll learn to dislike her. Yeah. And you would have forgiven her, but they won't. Mm -hmm. Secret, that's going to come a day when you're going to get on your nerve. If you tell your family, they ain't going to like him no more. So there's some things you gotta keep under your roof. Yeah, right. If you tell your friends and your cousins and them, it, it's gonna start a mess. Yeah, right. Learn how to talk with God. Yeah. He's the best counselor you'll ever have. And should you reach a place where you need personal counseling, run from people with good advice but bad marriages. Yeah. <laughs> Find somebody with a Bible and a good marriage of their own who can be confidential with your matters mm -hmm. and hold them to heart and give you earnest, honest feedback. Mm -hmm. Other than that, only tell Jesus he's still a wonderful counselor. Mm -hmm. fourth, fourth one is avoid infidelity. We yeah. live in a sex-crazed culture where people get married thinking the grass is green all over the side of the fence. They think that the grass stays green all the time. Y'all listen to me. Mm -hmm. Any grass that stays green all the time is fake. It's astral turf. It's not even green. <laughs> you have to learn to water your own grass. Yeah. The only people that should touch you intimately are the hands that you're holding right now. Amen. I want to make this announcement. Men are microwaves. Women are crock pots. Listen to me, Travis. No deposit, no return, son. You have to love her all day long for her to be interested in intimacy late at night. That's like a holding jump. You have to wake up and say deposit, 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 deposit. You understand that? And she's a crock pot. She only gives you what you give her back. Man, look at this beautiful woman. And say this to her. Say this. Everything I need in a woman is standing right here before me. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. God made you to satisfy me. And today, I proudly announce that I'm completely satisfied. Y'all trap is meant that, ain't that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this handsome black man in this beautiful tuxedo. He's gonna be your boat to the day you die. Look at him and say, everything I need in a man is standing right here before me. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. God made you to satisfy me. And today, I proudly announce that I'm completely satisfied. 
She meant that. Listen to me carefully. First Corinthians 7 says, Render unto each other due benevolence, so that the devil doesn't tempt you. Here's what Paul was saying. It's hard to need a snack if you've already had a meal. Learn now to satisfy yourselves here. Touch, hug, kiss as a married couple should. Can I share with you the irony of our culture? We're trying to get singles to be celibate. And we're trying to get married folk to enjoy it. Know now you ought to enjoy your bedroom. The Bible says it is holy and undefiled. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Build your marriage on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey man, if y'all miss everything I just said, feel this. Mm. You'll never make each other happy until you learn to satisfy God. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your task, friends, is to make God happy with you as a husband. Yeah. And if you make God happy, she'll be crazy about you. Yeah. And listen, you'll never make him happy, Supreme. But when you seek to make God happy, yeah. he will just you'll be the object of the desire. So learn now that everything around you is going to change. Little people become big people. Older people pass, but Jesus lasts forever. Amen. Build your marriage on him, and I promise you it will last a lifetime. Amen. In that you have joy in hands, shared in the giving and receiving of rings, in the reading of the scriptures, the praying of petitions to heaven, it is my proud pastoral plea and petition to pronounce you husband and wife. Woo! In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus.